Open this meeting at 6.30. Because he's working these days or something. I don't know. That's what I mean. um, first on the agenda is public <coughs> input. Is there anyone that would like to make a comment? <coughs> All right, seeing none. Um, the student report, we have um, Michael Tyrell. Uh, he will be a junior. Or, no, you're a junior now and you'll yes. be a, a, a senior next year. All right. Yeah, this is, this is one of those times where you think there's nothing going on, but there's really a ton in athletics, academics, <laughs> and in the arts. I mean, I see p teachers running around, administrators running around, and I feel like I'm running around at this point of the year. But so in athletics, many of our teams have made very deep runs into the playoffs, and they've enjoyed much success. Softball slaughtered, and I found out today that slaughtered is actually a technical term in that sport. Mm -hmm. They slaughtered Arlington Catholic 12-0 to zero yesterday, and that was the D2 North quarterfinals. They need to win two more uh, to win to become the D2 North champs and four more to become the D2 champs for the state. Uh, their next game is Wednesday against either Marblehead, who is favored to win uh, D2 North, uh, or Whittier Tech. An update for you. Whittier Tech beat Marblehead. They six, did. Six nothing. Really? Yep. Thank you very much. I didn't know that. Um, and baseball was playing today. I, don't, I checked MA scores right before I came here. They lost. Three nothing. That's, that's a tough loss. Very but good game. Still, they played. You know, that's the D3 North quarter final, so yep. that's deep into the tournament. Um, Lacrosse also made a strong playoff run. They lost 14-8 uh, to Winchester in the D2 North quarter finals last Thursday, which is also a close, uh, close match, a close game. Uh, last Thursday, Julia Thorstad, she's uh, our new student rep for next year, so you guys will be introduced to her. Every single new student rep who comes makes me feel like I don't do enough. Um, so Julia Thor Thorstad, Ali Grasso, and Caitlin Gorgini play second in the heptathlon behind Pentucket on Thursday, and that wraps up a, f a phenomenal girls track season, uh, girl track season where they were state champs in their division. Our fine arts programs also continues to impress. Uh, Beauty and the Beast was nominated for best stage management, best hair and makeup, and best dance ensemble. These awards will be hosted by the Mass <coughs> Educational Theater, MET, on June 23rd at the Berkeley Center. And without getting too far ahead of ourselves, they will be doing Shrek the Musical next fall, which is an interesting premise, but like everything Maskers does, I'm sure it'll be pure gold. They always do a great job. Uh, even though there are only 12 days of school left and no one's counting, uh, academics continue to really be strong. Our student council is sending three delegates, Duncan McNeil, Emily Cooperstein, and our own Lizzie Barrett, to the National Association of Student Councils at the Mall of America. I don't know the exact dates of that, but they'll be going, and Duncan and Lizzie will be presenting their own workshops there, actually. And that's where the best and the brightest of student council in the whole nation go, which is pretty amazing. We have three, three students going. The administration of biology MCAS also went smoothly this past week. And I remember being so happy as a, as a sophomore, finally finishing MCAS. You're like, I'm done. And then the next year, you get slammed with AP tests, SATs, and just, <laughs> it, it's no better. Um, finals will begin next Wednesday and will continue until Monday. And of course, uh, we had graduation on Friday. I was there, I don't know how many of you guys were there. It was awesome. Um, all the speakers made sure to say how much the class of 2018 was awesome, which some of us may disagree with, but um, it was great. I remember, Mr. Bernard, your speech was excellent. Your quote from Robert Kennedy was especially timely. Thank you, Michael. So it's a great ceremony. I always like graduation. I'm looking forward to my next year, so thank you. Very good. I also have, sorry, one piece of student work. Uh, this is from my AP US history class. We were tasked with writing a letter to a editor of a newspaper from a certain perspective during the Vietnam War. So for me, I was tasked with writing as a middle-aged uh, father who has a son who's in Vietnam from a poor area um, of Boston Lake Chelsea who's, who's, who many, many uh, sons and daughters fought from that region. So here's the letter and a rubric that I'll pass along with it. Excellent. The only, th only thing I would say, Michael, I mean, I, I was at graduation and I would, I was amazed by the speakers. Well, they I, mean, were. I, I mean, honestly, like the speakers were fantastic. I mean, Mr. Bernard was a champ because he was not feeling very well and got through the speech. But um, Owen DeClean, just to, you know, it, I mean, it, it's one of the funniest speeches I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he was on point. It was witty. It was, it was, it was fantastic. So. And yeah, the the whole class this year actually, as much as I was saying, they're not the greatest class. They actually have some excellent, excellent students. Owen is great. He's a he commands the stage. He's a he's a theater man. Um, the other speakers were 
had great speeches, very profound, excellent messages, but they all didn't, you know, lose track of where they were, what the audience was. So I really liked the speeches. Yeah. I just, I just think Mr. LePret and Jerlin needed to do a little bit more than the handshake because yeah, yeah. whenever, whenever they're changing off for the speeches, they had like an elaborate, elaborate handshake, and then <laughs> poor Jerlin had to get handed off for Mr. I, I found out later he wanted to, but she didn't. High five. <laughs> 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 she, she was good with a high five. <laughs> And the class of 2018 was the best class ever, ever. That's, That's what we all said, yes. but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll have to prove you. that next year. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is the MSBA SSBC update, which I don't believe we you, have anything no. to update. We, we have, have a meeting tomorrow <coughs> here at 5.30, but outside of that. And that meeting was canceled. Is it? Tomorrow's meeting was canceled. Oh, I haven't. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So then there won't be. With no no tomorrow. date for a new meeting set. Okay. All right. Um, next, new business. Do you want to? I'd be happy to, Madam Chairman, and, and for the committee. Um, so a number of people are here tonight um, to be publicly recognized for some outstanding achievements. And the first is um, from the Batchelder School, the Explorer Vision team, which. Uh, I'm not going to steal their thunder, their thunder or Mr. McCalleen's thunder, but have a pretty uh, special achievement to talk to you all about. And I see that, um, let's see, I've got Patrick, Liam, Damien's over here, I think, right, Alberto. So uh, who am I missing? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So we have uh, some really good news to share with all of you. And I think, Mr. Colleen, you have a little bit of insight into that? Um, of the project. So our, our third graders, the bachelor school um, for, I'm going to ask Mr. Cassell quickly, how many years now, Bill? How many years? 15 or so. 15 uh, years have participated in uh, Toshiba Explorer Vision and it's a great program where students are charged with finding solutions to problems that they think may exist in about 20 years. Um, over those 15 years we've had multiple regional winners um, and this year we had a national winning team which they just returned on Saturday from a three-day all-expense paid trip to Washington DC where they showcase that each of the students have won a $10,000 savings bond um, plus some pretty other cool things along the way I think but I figured just to give you an overview not knowing um, exactly where we have been is I'd love to share their little video from the website. So this will give that, it will take the pressure off of them in speaking in front of all of you, although they've probably been speaking about this project for the past 72 hours. <laughs> if you follow on my Twitter feed, they just uh, posted a news feed down in Memphis where they were interviewed as well. Volume. Click the little volume thing on the bottom. Oh, yeah. yeah. On the bottom of the screen. Yep. There is a way to do it from that. So how is ISO better than the choice of summer? Well, we have 
so I'd like Great. to present to you, school committee, the national winners for Toshiba Explorer Vision, uh, Liam Patrick. <laughs> They are well versed. If you have any questions, feel free to redirect them right at them. Anyone have questions or comments? So, who's the lead scientist on this team? Those aren't those aren't on board. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great it was a great job because um, they're already starting to look at some sort of drone technology. So, you guys are really at the forefront of what's going on in the um, agriculture industry. So someone must have done a little homework to see what was going on. It's, it's really great because you're spot on with the technology that's needed. So it's a great job. Congratulations. I think it's a wonderful idea that you all came up with, having grown up on a farm and having to walk beans and make sure that you get all the weeds and the insects off. It's a smart thing. So well done. I just want to know, how did you guys like the trip to DC, Washington, DC? What did you do? A lot, a lot of talking. Of talking. <laughs> Did you meet kids from all over the country too? Um, yeah. yeah. From wow. Canada. Yeah, wow. Lot, what lot. was the funnest part of your trip? Um, the funnest part was maybe being on TV. <laughs> <laughs> we should be able to say I have that on the Twitter yeah. feed. I, I did neglect one of the my favorite things about this project, and I say this to the kids when they participate, is the fact that really the school is just the window. <laughs> Um, their teacher mentor was Suzanne Callen, and all the teachers, Mr. Cassell, Mrs. Dill, mentored different teams. Um, Ms. Callen and, um, did get to go to D.C. as well with the, the group and their families. Um, but then also Mr. McGaffigan and Mr. Russo were the parent coaches. I, I always interchange coaches and mentor. Was it mentor? Mentors, mentors is what they call the title. Um, so they worked with the kids outside of school hours. Um, I think that, L Liam, you mentioned that you met for about 10 weeks at about an hour, mostly at the library and the news video interview I saw today. So it's one of those school home connections where the parents really take the lead and take the students learning to the next step. So it's one of those really feel good um, home school connections for a great product. Well, I also think it's great seeing the parents here, how excited and how proud they are and they should be. I mean, they should be and the kids, I mean, we talk a lot about the sports in the town, and you know, I think that's what people see a lot. But it's great when you know <laughs> academically we're doing well as well. And I mean, again, anything, anybody that wins anything like an, on a national level, that's amazing. It's so hard to do, and you know, you guys should be very, very proud of yourselves. They look pretty calm, I'll tell you that. Yeah. They look pretty calm for, for it. So. The interview, they were very composed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And clearly they took acting lessons after watching the video. I mean, you guys were great in that. <laughs> Great job. You all should be proud of yourselves. Very great. Very nice. Thank you. Do I get a photo for the transcript? Thank you. There we go. <laughs> you guys want to get a photo for the transcript too while, while they're here? Yeah. Do you want to do that with the committee? Yeah. Do you want to do that with the committee? We'll do a little photo right here. For the chairwoman? Oh. Yeah. Janine loves <laughs> being taken. <laughs> yes. You should. All right. Yes. So if I could have the young men come down for a photo.
please. And the mentors, too. Let's go. Oh, Mr. Cassell. I think it should just be. And Mr. Cassell, uh, the Could you? coach or whatever. I don't think teacher. Teacher. There's a committee in there that you no. would people that. Teacher. Mr. Yeah. Cassell, could you come down for the photo as well? <laughs> <laughs> come on, Bill. Come on. <laughs> you going? I won't. Sorry. All right, just right in front of come the Come on, Mel. Oh, I thought it was just going to be the chair. Oh, well. Right in front oh, of the you table. Want the chair there you go. Yeah, oh, well. I think you guys no, are used to it. Yeah, I think so. There's too many, there'll be too many people probably. You stand behind them. There we go. I'm going to photobomb. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Great job, boys. Okay. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Did you want to just introduce all, all of them? Uh, Ms. Or, uh, Mrs. Cleary? Yes. Yeah, I can do that, sure. Okay. So, Madam Chairman and members of the committee, we have uh, the honor of having Mrs. Cleary from the, the uh, Hood School with us tonight, who um, has another a very proud accomplishment for the district and for the Hood School. Um, in April, I learned from her principal, Mr. McKay, who may have some words to contribute tonight, too, um, for, Mrs., for Mrs. Cleary, that um, she had been uh, a named a finalist for the New England Patriots STEM Teacher of the Year program. And as it turned out, she was uh, one of five that, were, that will be honored in November, I believe. Is that right, Whitney, at a conference? And so I did a little bit of work. Um, and I, I've had the opportunity to see firsthand some of the work she's doing at the, at the uh, Hood School with particularly the maker spaces and her, her drive for um, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and, and how she imparts that enthusiasm to her students is really, is really remarkable. And it's a, it's a very well-deserved honor for her um, and for the district. Um, on the website, for the program, um, to be eligible, a teacher must possess um, these items and probably some others that I know Mrs. Cleary does possess, but they must spend the majority of the school day involved in direct instruction to students. They must be skilled in imp implementing effective teaching strategies. They must be able to explain a personal teaching philosophy. They must be able to inspire students in STEM-related topics. They must show involvement and leadership in student-related extracurricular activities, and they must be respected by students, parents, and coworkers, which uh, certainly is true uh, for Whitney. So, Glenn, did you want to? Yeah, you, you actually, that description does a pretty good job of what I've experienced with Mrs. <coughs> um, I've had the pleasure over the past 10 years to watch her professional practice grow um, beyond even, sometimes I have to say, okay, help me through this and help me understand this. So. She's pioneered so many things with us for science. She, she teaches science in isolation in our fifth grade, but she's, she does much more than that. She consults with colleagues. Um, she organizes Makerspace Day. She runs a news team. She does all these things that, that are on science theme. And that inspiration piece is key for me. So she's inspiring the children through our Makerspace Days across classrooms and grade levels. But above and beyond that, she's inspiring her colleagues to, to take risks and challenges. She even had me teaching a, a morning enrichment class around Makerspace, and it was just like, that uncomfortable level that she pushes you to in a very good way because it makes you professionally challenged and she does that for everybody in the building. So I, I want to tell you how proud I am of you and your accomplishment and, and thank you on behalf of the Hood School. Um, I actually had Mrs. Uh, Anthony, our digital learning specialist, couldn't be here tonight but she actually shared a little quote. I've had the pleasure and privilege of working with Mrs. Clare over the past three years. She has a wealth of information and always has exciting and engaging ideas in the STEM field to implement with our students and I'm thankful for that. So on behalf of all the Hood School, thank you for everything you've done, and I'm so proud of you for getting this award. I, I, when we, um, I think it was three years ago, maybe two years ago at the Hood when we do our annual visits, and we were introduced to the makerspace, and I was so excited by that because um, I'm involved in the tech industry on the periphery, and I know how much was going on out, especially out in Silicon Valley in the makerspace area. And the kids were so excited about it, and um, you know, 
people think it just means technology or whatever, but it's anything. You can make anything in makerspace. And that's why I'm so excited because kids get to use um, their minds and their hands at the same time. And um, I think all three schools, I believe, all three elementary schools, I believe, are, uh, have makerspaces now. And here. And here. Yes. So it's, um, we're moving in the right direction and we're moving quickly. And um, really appreciate all you've done for the school and the district. I guess I always speak to now. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the thing I would just say is that it's great when the kids get involved and how excited they are, but I think a lot of times they take their enthusiasm from the teachers. And so it's great when teachers really care about it and dedicate themselves and really put themselves into it as well. And so, I mean, I think you're, you are the example for the students. You are the one that, you know, kind of fosters that. I mean, I, I, my kids go to the little, but I remember when I got elected and I did the tour, I remember you in the hallway and all the kids talking to you and Mr. McKay, you know, at that point in time, going on and on about how much you've done for the makerspace in the school. And so, I mean, I just want to congratulate you and it's great when you know, somebody that deserves it gets the recognition. She's had no easy task with that. I mean, <laughs> to start something from the ground up that we have no idea about and trying to learn the process. We start off with a nice book study, um, some professional development, learn from that. So she took a change model and just really implemented really effectively and got it done, which so many of those things kind of hang. She brought it right to the end. It was great. And then she upped the game by creating these all across school maker days where we mix up the grade levels and we mix up all the kids and we go across classrooms and, you know, it builds community as well as that stimulates that interest in that hands-on STEM stuff. So I, again, and I forgot to mention that she also received a thousand dollar grant. So congratulations um, on that. And we've already spent that, I believe, on some science tables <laughs> for fifth grade, correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was excited to spend it. So thank you. I mean, you just keep raising the bar. I mean, you just got to get over it again still. So. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much for your support and the nomination as well. Thank you. Thank you, Whitney. Okay, moving on. So, uh, Madam Chairman, and for the committee, so tonight we are, um, for the first time, um, the committee is honoring uh, retirees <coughs> of the school district. And I think actually Mrs. Copsey was right. nice right here because yep. I think it was Mrs. Copsey. Her idea. When she was on the committee when we set our goals, uh, when the committee set its goals last summer. Um, thought it would be nice to bring the retirees uh, in each year and honor them publicly, something that had not been done previously. And I think everybody shared that in, in the feeling that it was a really nice idea. So we have um, folks from the elementary schools that are retiring to be honored tonight and on June 25th um, when the middle school and high school principals will be here to present their school improvement plans, much like the elementary pr principals are here tonight, um, we will honor the, the secondary level teachers that are retiring. So um, tonight, unfortunately, one of the people that um, we had hoped to have here, um, Laurie McBride from the, from the little school, um, is not able to join us. She had something come up, but she had originally expressed that she um, did want to be here, but um, regrettably could not. So. I think um, the three folks that are being honored tonight um, have a total of 50 years of service to the district, which is, which is pretty special. Um, and I'm going to start kind of in, in ascending order, if I could. So Chad, I'm going to start with you. Um, Chad Early has, uh, and I hope all of my, my data is correct in, in the research I did on your uh, tenure here, but uh, has been a teacher here for 10 years in grades three and four. And it's always kind of funny when you go back and you start to look through people's files. You all have a file. <laughs> uh, some of the things you don't know about people. And I, Chad, I, I learned that uh, in the uh, enrichment uh, program at the Hood School, you've taught cooking and piano and also MCAS test preparation. And I, I've gotten the, uh, I've had the good fortune of get, getting to know Chad from my visits uh, to the Hood School the, over the last few years as the superintendent. Always a smile on his face, just a very positive person. Kids gravitate to him in his classroom. It's really something special to see. So, um, Chet, we do have a gift for you on behalf of the district. Um, but before, if you don't mind, before you accept the, the gift, and I'm hoping you'll, you'll open it um, here, uh, one of the things that we have traditionally done for um, retiring um, staff is we ask them to identify a book um, that they would like to have placed in their school's library, um, kind of in honor of their time as a teacher. So um, what I have here tonight is um, the book that we will be placing in the library at the Hood School. And my administrative assistant does a nice job creating kind of a little uh, sticker. You can look at this, chat when you want, if you want to come up, um, of your time as a teacher at the Hood School. And this will be placed in the library. And the book, the book that, uh, that Chet 
um, selected is the story of the um, of the Trapp family singers by Maria von Trapp, and he he's we asked the retirees a question: Why is why is this one of your favorite books? And what Chet wrote is, um, this is an early on favorite, so inspiring. It teaches us that we must have value driven principles to live by. Maria von Trapp exemplified these principles throughout her life. She made it work for her and her family through devotion, determination, and grit. Certainly some, some wonderful principles that we'd like to see all of our students possess. So, so Chet, this will be placed in the, uh, in the Hood School Library. And if you don't mind, um, of course, I'm really not giving you much of a choice either, but I, I was hoping you'd come down and accept this from the committee and maybe see what the, uh, what the district is presenting you on the uh, occasion of your retirement. <laughs> Excuse me. Jack, congratulations and thank you. So next, um, also from the Hood School and also with 10 years um, of experience is Karen Kebberman. Um, she was hired as a grade one teacher in 2008, also taught the second grade and, uh, and kindergarten. She's also taught in the after school enrichment program. Again, an, another affinity for cooking, am I right, Karen? In crafts, yeah, yeah, great, nice. And similarly to, uh, to Chet, in my work as the superintendent and my visits to the Hood School, um, you know, and Karen has invited me into her class on a number of occasions to read to students, which is always a favorite thing of mine uh, to do, particularly the, um, you know, first graders, kindergartners really are, a, you know, they're a hoot and it's really kind of fun to go in and it, it really grounds me and it's, it's something special, so I've appreciated that. But again, um, like Chet, you know, a very, very positive person, smile on her face all the time and I, I wanna thank you for your 10 years of service in North Reading, Karen. So similarly, um, we asked Karen if she would um, select a book to be placed in the, uh, in the library at the uh, Hood School, and she selected a book called Days with Frog and Toad. And again, answering the question, why is this book one of your favorites, Karen wrote, the Frog and Toad series is one of my favorites because of the humor and the friendship, caring, patience, and tolerance that they show for each other. Again, you know, just a really nice message, I think, for our, for our students. So similarly, um, Ann has done a nice job with a, a little inscription here for you that this will be sent to the Hood School Library. So. And the committee also has a gift for you, uh, Karen. Jane's really getting a lot of pictures taken the last few years. <laughs> Did Chad open his? <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't, he didn't open it, right? You want, don't you want to open it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they opened at the same time. That's right. <laughs> two, the two of you can open that if you'd like. <laughs> you won't. You won't be uh, spoiling the surprise. Spoiling the surprise. No. Oh, wow. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> Isn't that nice? You're very welcome. Thank you. And lastly, tonight, um, Sandy Romanowitz. Hi, Sandy. <laughs> Sandy has worked in the district for 30 years. <coughs> excuse me, first hired in 1988 as a part-time food services associate at the Batchelder School, um, worked in food services for nine years through 1997, and then was hired as a general paraprofessional, and then ultimately she has been um, the, the face of the school in a, in a lot of ways um, at the Batchelder as the secretary for Mr. Colleen. Um, am I right, Sandy, since 1997? Is that correct? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> no, excuse me, since 19, 1999. 1999. <laughs> well, I heard that. Okay, yes, thank you. So again, you know, as I said, when you walk into that school, you know, Sandy's often the first person that I see, and just a, a very, you know, warm and welcoming face. And I know you're going to be very sadly missed at the, at the, at the, at the Batchelder School. <laughs> my, the highlight of, of, of my, t my interactions with Sandy were on her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> When they brought in a gorilla to sing a telegram. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that? A pink. a pink gorilla. Yeah, it was great. It was great. So Sandy. It was on Twitter. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really, it was great. You were a good sport that day, too. Good for you. So similarly, we asked um, 
We asked Sandy to identify a book that she would like to have placed in the uh, Batchelder School Library to honor her 30 years of service to that school, and she chose a book called Otis. And in responding to the question, why is this book one of your favorites, Sandy wrote, Otis is a new favorite this year. I have enjoyed reading to the kindergarten classes over the years and have read many great books, but this particular selection really touched me. A most unlikely pair, the old tractor and the young calf form an immediate bond, and through wonderful illustrations, the story unfolds to show the power of friendship between the two. It really is a beautifully illustrated book. I got a chance to look at it this afternoon. It really is nice, so thank you very much, Sandy. And um, the district has a gift for you as well, if you would like to come down. <laughs> I, I want to thank um, Mrs. Kopke for coming up with this idea, and uh, it's it's probably long overdue. As someone who's been on the committee for a long time, now I feel bad that we've been ignoring the retired, not ignoring them, but not publicly recognizing them for all these years because it's a really nice thing to do, whether they've been here five years, 10 years, or 30 years, they've given a lot to our kids and they put a lot of their lives into it. So I'm really happy that Julie came up with this idea at our last uh, goals meeting. But of course, now she's not here to participate with us right. in an official, and I'm here to celebrate. right, but you're not here in an official manner to participate with us, but I, I really thank you for coming up with the idea. Yes. Get a picture of the three of them? The three All three them. together? Um, yeah, we'll can we have the three of you come up so we can? No, we should have just taken credit for this. She's not here. No. <laughs> Thank you. I'm kidding. I think it is nice. It really is. It's great. Yeah. Daniel, like, and, um, I think we should all have to read the books. We'll each take one. I'll take Otis. <laughs> that book is adorable. It really is, that? is cute. I, I haven't seen that one. It's, it. it's beautiful uh, illustration. <laughs> Is everyone coming for the picture with the three of them? However, how, whatever you'd like. Is that what you? The, the three retirees yeah. together. I think that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Put the three of them, them all together. Four of us okay. in back. Yeah. 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 <coughs> I think that would be nice. Yeah. Right, photos. Put them in front. This time I like stuck my chest out, so she'll notice it right away. Why did you do that in Why the picture? Did you do that? All right. <laughs> Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have the presentation from the elementary school improvement plans. You don't want to move. Do Thank you. Are you using PowerPoint, Mr. Mc Dr. McKinney? Oh. Yes, PowerPoint. That's a long time. I have a hard time with the Google Drive and the changing of the fonts and stuff, so I'm just going to go for that. I just go right back to PowerPoint. It's up to you. Do we have a. Um, Probably. Do you mind if we. That we're going to jump down um, to the North Reading Education Association contract agreement, hey, um, and then we'll go back to the presentation. <clears throat>
Um, Madam Chair. I believe, yes. You, I did, so we noticed a, a kind of a, a small error on page 25, but I, I think before the committee, mind if I share that with you now and before the committee votes? Yeah. So what I have for you here is a new page 25, and, and then the back page is kind of attracts changes to show you what's different. It's essentially around how the elementary um, curriculum specialists are identified. And this has this is just reflecting what the existing practice is around um, the, the English language arts and literacy and the grade level distribution. So you can see that on the back page is, is kind of a just a delineation that's broken out a little bit differently. And then we also discovered that um, the change in the department now with the <coughs> advent of digital learning is now no longer called business education, but it's the entrepreneurship program and the stipend was wrong. It was actually um, too high. That's a stipend that's reflected now. You see it there for the okay. three fiscal years in blue. Yes. <clears throat> and then I think the last thing at the bottom about the middle school, high school, library, media, um, the word monitor okay. um, is the one that um, actually is the, is the title that we used in the posting for that position. Again, it was just a clerical thing. <coughs> So, Madam Chair, if I, if I could ask a question. Mr. Bernard, does this impact the approval by the NREA? I, I ran it by Peter Kane last week, the president, and he responded today that there was no issue. Okay. So I did, I did do that uh, right. with Patrick Daly's help. Thank you. That was a good catch on the uh, entrepreneur. Digital learning and entrepreneurship yeah. of the two departments now, correct. Yeah. So again, I don't think they're significant, but I thought you should yeah. know about them before you took a vote. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, Mike, I believe you had a, a comment that you wanted. I can wait. I don't know if there's a presentation. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna present the. Through you, Madam Chair. All right. So, Mr. Webster. So we uh, came to an tentative agreement. I believe it was April 30th or somewhere thereabouts in the, in in late April, with the NREA on this three-year contract. And the first thing I want to do, I want to commend the NREA and their negotiating team under the direction of the NREA President Peter Kane. Incredibly well prepared, incredibly hard working. Um, they ran a lot of numbers, they had spreadsheets, they came in with details, and they did a great job. Uh, negotiations aren't easy. I, I always, this is my third uh, teacher's contract I've done, and I always, um, I really don't like it because I love teachers and I hate sitting across from them and telling them they can't have something. And that's what negotiations turns out to be. You can't have this, but you can't have that. But uh, this was, a, as I said, a really good team. We started late 2017. Uh, Mr. Bernard, Michael Connolly, Patrick Daly, Liam O'Connell, our counsel, myself and, and Jerry Venezia were uh, represented our side. And uh, I would say it was one of the most cordial and um, professional negotiating sessions I've been involved in since I've been uh, on the school committee. It was outstanding uh, on both sides' parts, I believe. So the contract that we will be voting on tonight um, runs through, what do I have that here? Runs through 2021, through June 30th, 2021. The highlights of the contract, uh, cost of living adjustments are 2% for the next fiscal year, 2.5% for fiscal 2020 and 3% for fiscal 2021. Another major step we took was to make sense out of the jumble that was um, the stipends that we pay for extracurricular activities. It, it seems like just over the years, those stipends have kind of taken on a life of their own and no one knew why this stipend was this much, why that stipend was that much. Uh, a committee, a subcommittee was formed early on. I think uh, Mr. Daly, didn't uh, Dr. Daly was part of that subcommittee? Actually, it was actually in the last, in the last contract. Right. Um, and then it kind of went dormant. And then yes, we re reinvigorated that this and year. They did a tremendous amount of study uh, to find out, you know, the popularity of the clubs. When do the clubs meet? Um, just all kinds of numbers to help decide, determine what stipends should go to the advisors. And um, they came in with a very, with an excellent presentation. And another big change is in the um, arts department, where uh, there was a, a compelling case made to the school committee, or at least to the negotiating team at the time, that we should really start treating the arts department like we treat the sports, the uh, athletic program. 
And by that, I mean paying stipends that are close to or equal to what coaches get. If you look at some of the, some of the uh, uh, advisors in the arts program, especially at the high school, they put in as much, if not more time, than many of our head coaches for varsity programs. So we, we spent a good deal of time reviewing that. We approved it. I will tell you now, um, and we will be voting on this later this year, there, it's going to result in a fee for um, the arts program. It'll be a fairly small fee, I believe. It won't be approaching what the athletic fee is. But in order to pay these larger stipends to the advisors, uh, a small fee will be required. I think that's a fair way to put it. Uh, other highlights, um, the sick leave buyback provision is now capped at a maximum benefit of 200 days at $50 per day, and that's effective July 1st, 2000, uh, yeah, 2020. And that's a, about a $3,500 reduction, I believe, in um, what the current benefit is. And also the early retirement incentive provision will be eliminated at the conclusion of this contract. Those are two areas that the school committee and association have been working on over the last three negotiating sessions in the last nine years or six and nine years to, we've been working to, to lower or reduce those. Those, a lot of these provisions came into being when um, we hit a really bad economic slump in the 90s, I believe. And a lot of benefits were added because teachers weren't getting any increases in annual salaries. And now that salaries are becoming, you know, in my opinion, a lot fairer than they were, you don't need as many of these benefits. It's hard to convince the, the uh, association of that, but they went along with us on this, and, and we kept sick leave buyback in place at a maximum benefit of $10,000. So again, um, I think it was a, an excellent negotiating session. It, we had many sessions, seven or eight sessions, I believe, we met. And for a first time uh, president of the association, I think uh, Peter Kane did an outstanding job of uh, keeping his team unified and um, presenting you know, their, their demands to us. Yes, Mel. Um, well, I just want to thank Mel in particular um, and Jerry, who's not here anymore, and also Michael and Mr. Bernard for the work that they did on this because I mean, just from executive sessions, I know that there was a lot of hours spent in this, and you know, I mean, I, I, I think this is probably one of, if not the hardest job of anybody on the school committee, and I mean, Mel has done a lot of these contracts over the years, and this is prob, I would, just from talking to people, I think they say this is by far probably the hardest contract to negotiate, and so you know, it's a lot of work that's bit, get, that gets put into this, and I also know that, you know, Mel and Jerry really care about the teachers here, and it's got to be painful at times like we all would like to pay more to some of the people um, you know that are doing this and you know watching our kids and so it's it's not easy um, the other thing I would just say is about the it's not just the numbers I mean I think there was a plan by you know by Jerry and Mel from the very beginning about what to do there was some very important clarification of language as well which honestly if you didn't have the experience that they did, would have been missed and it was just you know just really clarifying a contract to get a good good language going forward that we can all build off of and so I just think it's really important to you know have people that can do that um, I think the when I looked at the contracts when I got on the committee the the one thing that I was really concerned about was like it just seemed like there was no rhyme or reason to the stipends and so it's great that there's more clarity on that now um, and I guess my only question which I think you just answered Mel was um, the the fees for the performing arts that will go to pay the stipends is is that all it goes to pay for or is there, is there something is it clear about what that will go to pay for yeah it will just pay f it'll pay for mainly for the advisors for um, arts and music activities theater and music activities at the s elementary school middle school and high school level and there'll be I'm assuming there'll be differing levels of fees at the at the different school different levels of schools yeah the, the idea is that the the user fee and then any other additional revenue from either ticket sales or other sources will help support the stipends and then all other expenses to put on the annual uh, productions, musical productions. Okay. 
we're no. anticipating having a presentation for you on at the next meeting Correct. at the 25th on a, on a fee structure. The one other thing I wanted to add was this: this contract puts our teachers squarely in the middle, in some cases, ahead of teachers in comparison communities. Um, we did we did make a few changes to make sure that our teachers got elevated slightly to put them right back in the in the center of. They're not at the top, right. but they're definitely they're far from the bottom. Also, yeah. I think that's an important point. I think a, a mm -hmm. big part of making adjustments to the salary schedule was very much driven by a lot of. Um, data of comparable districts right. of what's you know, area di districts that are in the geographical uh, you know, area and location near North Reading as well as our, our, our DART, our comparable districts. And certainly we were, you know, any adjustments were driven by what was the market competitive to ensure that, um, as, Ma as Mal just said, we may not, we're at the top, but certainly weren't going to fall behind over the length of the two years. And uh, one last thing, it, it was easier negotiating this year because three years ago we put in place the new salary structure, which is more standard, which is a standard salary structure versus what North Reading used to have. So that made it easier for us to negotiate a contract this we year. Have something like eighteen steps, and we well, we we had we had our own um, we had our own credit system. We had we didn't follow the norm in a lot of areas on a school contract and now our comparisons to right. the districts was right. easier this right. time because it was more right. in similar in structure yes <clears throat> yeah Mel, question for you on the early retirement incentive can you give me a little bit of history on why that's being removed you, you, john might have a better answer yeah, that yeah. I think, so when we had the discussion in the negotiations we think I think this is a holdover from many contracts ago. It is. And, and I think um, at a time when there did not um, exist a, an early, a kind of an early retirement option for teachers through the Massachusetts Teachers Retirement System. Mm -hmm. But with the, with the advent of the, what's called the Retirement Plus, and teachers can buy into that um, by paying additional um, contribution to their, reti their own personal retirement account, um, I think the, an early retirement incentive seems to be obsolete at this point because it's almost you're getting the benefit of the state retirement redundant. system and there really shouldn't be yeah it is yeah. it is redundant and so um we don't have a, a lot of teachers that take advantage of the early retirements or are at least eligible for but we do have we do have cases where we have them this year mm -hmm. that bec if they meet the criteria as it's outlined in the contract then they would they would be eligible and it's i think it was a significant um win for the district mm -hmm. to have that sunsetted at the end of this contract this is another thing. I, I, I'm pretty sure this was put in at one time um, for financial reasons, with the goal of getting older, more expensive teachers out of out of school districts and hiring young, um, less Super expensive yeah. teachers. Yeah. Which you can say, well, that's a great way to, way to run a business, but I don't know if it's a great way to run a school <laughs> district. When you know you're kind of driving experienced teachers out, and and I know that that's when early retirement incentives were were, were brought in again when financial times were tough. So that was another reason. Um, to, to, to sunset it. And we've worked on it over the last um, two contracts. We've significantly reduced the benefits of that early retirement where it was getting to a point where now we could, we could sunset it. And I think the committee felt that, or at least Mel and Jerry as, as the representatives of the committee felt that to, to do that three years out was the responsible thing to do. Because right. there could be people that have a plan. Exactly. To retire in a year or two that we're expecting. Right. That benefit, and so right. I think yes. having it now, and it would be four years out that yeah. somebody would, you know, have to be thinking about whether or not they would retire. So I'm assuming other towns are similar; they either do not have this type of incentive program or are doing away with them. A lot of towns do not have um, right. this type of program. Some do, you know. It's like the sick leave buyback. Right. Too. You know, yeah. they're different from community to community, but mm -hmm. I think I think this is I think this was a, a significant gain for the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Roberto. I have a brief statement I'd like to read. Thank you, Madam Chair. I wish to acknowledge the efforts of the school committee and the North Reading Education Association bargaining teams to bring about the agreement that's pending before the committee this evening. As the members of the committee who have served on the financial planning team are aware, the town's resources are limited. Each year, when we kick off the following year's budget process, the outlook is challenging at best. We have begun every budget process during my tenure with a projected deficit, and together we have worked to solve the deficit. A couple of years ago, we began incorporating long-term forecasting in an effort to better inform the decisions made during the pending budget process. 
This further highlighted the challenges that we can all anticipate to face in the coming years, although there is some hope that pending housing and future economic development will mitigate those challenges. Under state law, my role is not to prescribe the strategy of the school committee's negotiations. It's simply to cast a vote in favor or against the, uh, at this moment. My vote tonight is not an indicator either way of the position of the North Reading Board of Selectmen. I did not participate in negotiations, although I wish to thank the superintendent for briefing me on the content of this agreement prior to tonight's vote. Based on the challenges I highlighted a moment ago, I do have concerns regarding the affordability of the agreement. While there are in financial incentives that were just outlined uh, a moment ago, I would caution all parties to the agreement that, uh, as is the case with non-school collective bargaining agreements as well, there may be a time during the term that, it's diffi that difficult decisions regarding existing or proposed programs may have to be made in order that the agreement may continue to be honored. In deference to the process and strategy followed by the school committee, with the understanding that the school committee is prepared to take steps within its budget to absorb the cost of the agreement if necessary, and continuing to be respectful of the relationship fostered in the financial planning team, I will be voting in favor of the agreement. Thank you for the opportunity to offer these comments. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or discussion? All right. I'll accept the motion to, um, what do you say, ratify the contract? Or I guess I'll move to approve a three-year contract between the North Reading School Department and the North Reading Education Association beginning July 1st, 2018 and running through June 30th, 2021. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations. Well done, Mel. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Efforts, Mel. Thank you. Appreciate your representation. I appreciate you taking it out of order as well, Madam Chair. Thank you. <laughs> You're Thanks. welcome. I wish you all a good evening. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going. Mr. McKay in. Dr. McKay and Mr. Colleen. Oh, that's right. Dr. McKay <laughs> and Mr. Colleen. Um, Chris Molly's not making it. Your micro oh no they, they'll need it now <coughs> make sure you take it back oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to hear your we need to hear your wisdom yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for having us. My name is Glenn McCann, principal at the Hood School, and this is Mr. Sean Colleen. We're, um, we don't have Mrs. Molly with us tonight. She had an appointment that she just couldn't miss, so we'll be going through her portion of the school improvement plan as well. Um, the interesting thing about that is a way to frame it is that you'll see a lot of similarities between the three anyway, so there'll be certain points where there's some unique differences from each school. Um, and, and there's those things that are pretty standardized amongst the three of us that we, we try to like work together collaboratively to develop these plans and to set the mission and the goals for the school. With that being said, um, our, three, all, our three shared goals, and you'll always see that first top one for us, is that we believe that the teacher and student and the president of content is the most important thing. So if we can minimize class size and keep it at acceptable rates, we're going to do that to the best of our ability as the leaders of those three elementary schools. It's just the most important thing for us, and we stand by that. Um, many of you may know that the accountability formulas are changing, and we're still, Mr. Colleen and I love to banter back and forth around all the accountability formulas and the changes in them and maximizing our opportunities within each one of them. Um, so we really are trying to grasp what that new accountability system looks like and how it impacts our practices within our building. Um, so we took a really nice opportunity to break those down and come up with this, this goal around accountability for us, and specifically in ELA and math. So we're looking at a 25% increase in the number of students scoring in the meeting and exceeding expectation categories for all stu students participating in the standard ELA, MCAS, or math MCAS thus decreasing the number of students in partially meeting and not meeting categories. Um, and you'll see that carried throughout the school improvement plans across the three schools. 
And we love to always talk about why do we make a specific decision? Why are we doing these kind of things? What are we looking at? And we use that data-driven decision-making model. So when we sit down and we talk about things, we're saying, okay, but where's the data that proves that or makes us want to do that? Um, this is a nice opportunity for me to recognize the members of my school council. It's, it's, it's definitely a challenge. It's getting people from all different places coming to the school. And they really actually appreciate it as an intellectual exercise. It's just it's a great opportunity for them to understand why we do some of the things we do. So I want to thank Mrs. Wright. She's a, currently a first grade teacher at the Hood School. Um, Lisa Santilli, who actually had been on the school council prior to my arrival 10 years ago, so I was excited to have her back. Um, she's the community representative. I have Mrs. Rickayman. Um, she's a special education teacher. Myself, and I have Mrs. Carlson and Mrs. Del Rossi as my parent representatives, and they put in a lot of hours around this, um, helping me wordsmith a few of the things, so I really appreciate their efforts. Um, a couple of their, their kiddos actually ended up in the picture on our, on our hound dog hangout, so that's pretty nice. So our highlights for, from this year, um, you know, we love our co-teaching model. We, we find it very effective in some of the things that to meet some of our goals inside the school. Um, <coughs> our high needs cohort, which is students with disabilities, English language learners, and economic disadvantaged students still achieve high results. Um, and we continue to work that model to meet their needs. Um, you've already heard a little bit about our makerspace days. Um, so we've, I think we're going on number four right now. We did one of them around the Read Across America theme. And basically, we've maximized the makerspace so that hands-on learning STEM activities around also community building where we basically take the students and mix them across grade levels. And within each classroom, you'll have a range of students from K to five working together to achieve a, cha um, working together to achieve a challenge. So it's kind of like taking that hands-on STEM piece and also building community around it. Um, we have one scheduled for this Friday. Um, this was an auction year, so I'm sure many of you know that those auction years are very busy for our parents' association, and, and they've done a wonderful job with that. Um, it, there's just so many activities that go around it with the planning and all that, so I'm very thankful to them. Um, we had an introduction of our school-wide community meetings. We had always done one at the beginning of the year, setting the behavioral expectations around the school, um, and we've really felt as a faculty that it was it was nice to revisit those. So we use the SRR model, so we're safe, responsible, respectful. So this year we've revisited each one of those, and we're going to expand upon it as a separate meeting, and we're going to expand upon it as we go forward. Um, we have a new opportunity in art, um, and a fairly new opportunity in music. So we had a revamped Fine Arts Night, which was um, raved about. So we were very excited to do that. So that's that goal that we talked about, goal A for math and goal B for ELA. So this is our goal, teaching and learning. You'll see that we go through four categories that are measured on our rubrics for achievement as principals and administrators. Um, so the first area is teaching and learning, and we talk about the decrease and the increase of those student populations within ELA and math. Um, the, our focus area is to get us there. Um, implementation of best practices to meet the needs of all learners. <coughs> this year, we'll focus on differentiating instruction across settings. I think we have some opportunities to improve that practice across all classrooms rather than just in the co-taught classrooms. Um, so we'll be revisiting some of the Department of Education work on inclusionary practices that came out recently. We have our data-driven decision-making model. I know you'll hear a lot about that, and the, the teachers, they get it. They, they understand that that's, why, that's what drives what I do. Um, so we'll look at that to improve learning outcomes and wrap our minds around that new accountability system um, and maximize <coughs> the opportunities within it. And we'll continue to implement our co-teaching model across grade levels, and we'll continue to push focus on push-in service delivery model rather than the pull-out service delivery model. Management and operations, to provide a safe learning environment for all children, a healthy and safe environment in all schools provides optimal learning environment. To that end, student support services and a strong infrastructure for plant maintenance must be in place. Facilities must be able to accommodate the needs of teaching and learning. So our focus areas under that 
our continue our school-wide SRR program so that's that safe responsible respectful all around the school and we talk about it with the children and we're pretty proud that whenever you ask a hood school student what the school rules are they they're SRR and we're safe responsible and respectful um, we also embedded in that have more of like a caught being good program where children get caught engaging in SRR behaviors and the teacher puts in a nomination then from the nominations somebody gets selected and they get to put their hand up and paint on the high five wall of fame so we're going to continue with that um, we recognize that we have some concerns around dismissal procedures that are bubbling up again um, I believe it was seven or eight years ago that we revamped our whole dismissal procedure. Um, I have a feeling that that might be something we're looking at based on a few of the concerns that have been brought up recently. Um, we, we need to get better focusing on a coherent approach to social emotional learning. So we're going to start with a book study and try to go through a change model that way as, you know, start with the book study and then see how we can use that to improve our practice at the Hood School. And like I had said, an increased or an addition of school-wide community building meetings will occur. Family and community engagement. I, I know that my colleague here, Mr. Clean, has already mentioned his Twitter account three times, so I'm trying to keep up with him on this whole Twitter thing, so. That was four, because you just mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> See? So. Educating children is a community effort involving parents as well as the community resources. It provides a continual reinforcement of the academic and social ideals embraced by the school and community. Our objective is to promote the learning and growth of all students and the successes of all staff through the effective partnerships with families, community organizations, and other stakeholders that support the mission of the school, including the school committee, the school parents association, school councils, school staff, and the school community at large. Um, in our world, in my school, we talk a lot about hand in hand together we can. And we really feel like that's our motto, that's what we do. We feel that we can accomplish so many goals at the Hood School if we work with all stakeholder groups um, to meet the needs of our kids. So increase stakeholder outreach would be a goal for me and engagement through the use of technology, the website and Twitter. Continue with our grade five student council. If been to the Hood School or been to any Hood School event, you'll see that they're always out there. They have their matching green shirts on and they've, they're sending our message. Um, we will continue to raise funds and awareness regarding societal needs. Basically, if something occurs, an event, a tragic event or something like that, they get together. They work together to raise funds for that. Or when it comes time for us to do our food pantry donations, they collect all those. Um, so it's definitely a nice little group to work with. Uh, Mrs. Cleary is actually an advisor on that group, so she does a really good job with that, along with Ms. Cheever, uh, Mrs. Sherman. Many of you have been to our Read Across America events, so continue to participate in those. Please come in. If you get the invitation, it's definitely one of those, those nice experiences at the Hood School. It's one of those, <coughs> those marked events that we enjoy. Um, I think we have some fun with it. We've done some changes over the past 10 years, tweaks different ways, and each time it comes out special in a different way and we enjoy it so we'll continue with that um, I was approached by an Eagle Scout recently to do a project at the Hood School and and he's going to be building us a storage shed um, so I put that on here as a focus area because it is under facilities and maintenance it's certainly a concern for us with some storage issues that we're having so I, I'm enjoying working with him and we recently got our building permit so that was a fun process to go through with him um, so next one is hand in hand. You have, we talked about that, that mission of the school, like how we view things and we view it that we work together collaboratively to meet the needs of kids. Um, we will work with our parents association to establish a grant process for teachers. So basically that what's, what's happening with that is under management operations, we're looking at, we have all these opportunities, much like the maker space or um, we've recently purchased some standing desks to go across classrooms, but who ultimately is making that decision? Is it me only forwarding things that I see as important, or is it coming from a different angle from the school committee? So when the PA funds are being utilized, it's kind of, there's no real rhyme or reason to my advocacy around certain projects. So I'm working with our incoming parents association to establish more of like a grant process where two or three times a year, teachers can write up how much they want or what they want, and then we'll bring it through that process through the parents association to see they might have more questions they might approve it they might not even like it so 
definitely have some framework around that, so the management of that's a little tighter for me. <coughs> and our playground area definitely needs some work. I think it needs more work than, than we're able to do. So I've, I've already met with our newest president and I seem to be on the same page around that. It's less about the aesthetically pleasing environment for me, it's actually more about like the safety of that space because our children that we love so much are out there playing football every day, but now they've worn the, 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 the dirt down to actual stone. So we're moving where they're playing football and all those kind of things. So I think there's some opportunities out there for us to get a little better. Professional culture, implement our philosophy of working together as a learning community to foster high performance climate focused on student learning. So a professional school culture demonstrates a commitment to high standards that foster high performance and demonstration of student learning, increased focus on student learning as well as the analysis of student learning and the associated discussion on this topic improves student learning. So inside the Hood School, one of the mechanisms that we have is these study groups and each study group is responsible for taking on a specific topic researching it and reporting it back to the entire school. Um, this year we had co-teaching, we had a school climate group, and a makerspace group. Um, in years past we've had school-wide behavior, much like how our SRR behavior map was um, developed, or we had uninterrupted literacy blocks as a group and they worked with the school schedule to maximize school scheduling. So those are the three that are, are, are currently now. Um, there might be some movement over the summer that might come out of like a push from a Mrs. Cleary or somebody like that who has something that they're intellectually interested in and we just may pursue it as a school. We may do it for one year. It may carry across for several years. Um, our school, so inside of that school climate group, so we have the study groups, we have what we refer to as the happy hound dogs, um, the hood school hound dogs and the teachers love to get together and they, they have team building activities, I collegial building activities that they do inside and outside of school. Um, and some of these things are hound dog days, like I believe last Wednesday was ice cream Sundays. This Wednesday is something like iced teas are being delivered to the school at lunchtime for the teachers to enjoy. They manage it all themselves. They do it all themselves. It's great. And they do these morale pals. So when they, they leave presents for beginning of the year they sort out who was interested in morale pals and they pick a name and then they support that person throughout the year with special prizes and gifts and it's anonymous until the end we're having our reveal I believe on June 22nd um, and then the data person in me says okay we've collected some data um, over the past years around school climate um, the telmath survey was one of those mechanisms and then we did our own internal audit around um, school climate, but it's certainly something that we really need to collect that data and, and, and look at it again and just to make sure that my perceptions of a happy place is, is everyone's ha perce perception because there's that direct correlation between staff collegiality and feeling good about a workplace and student performance and student level of engagement. So new initiatives this year. So we talked about school-wide focus meetings with the school psychologist, that's Dr. Mansfield. <coughs> Um, focus on the new accountability system. We'll research and improve our pre-referral practices. Um, we have to define inclusionary practices as a means to improve our differentiated instructional practices. Um, we recently did a workshop, and you'll see empowering writers across the three presentations tonight. Um, parents association block grants and the re-implementation of a third kindergarten a hybrid. So Hood School has, is getting an additional kindergarten this year, and they're hybrid models, so that definitely takes some planning and, and some working out of specific things. Would you like me to just keep going? Um, do you want us to stop and answer specific questions about the hood, or do you want to do the whole presentation and then ask at the end? I think it might work better to do all three. Okay. Um, that way, if we're asking a question that's going to be done at the other schools, then mm -hmm. I don't have, you know what I'm saying? Just like, so at the EF Little School, she, I spoke with Chris today and she had mentioned that, you know, how happy she was that the work that this group had put forward, the amount of hours that they had spent um, talking about developing this plan. So Linda Emery was the parent representative, Kate Schultz was the other parent representative, Debbie Aldrich, Michael Maloney, and Mrs. Molly. So a thank you to them for working with her to 
develop this school improvement plan. So her highlights for this year was completed a wind block makerspace event designed by staff and parents. Workshops were facilitated by staff, parents, and community members. Um, she increased technology opportunities in the classroom for research, assessment, and practice of math facts and skills. <coughs> Worked with faculty and staff to develop new school rules, expectations, and begin to research positive behavioral intervention and support systems, so PBIS. Um, expanded data days to include iReady, both ELA and math, and use data to plan interventions and adjust teaching practices and continue to encourage the participation in SEI, or Sheltered English Immersion Endorsement Workshops. At least one teacher at each grade level at the little school is endorsed, um, as well as classroom observations focused on UDL, Universal Design for Learning, and No Adam. So th you'll see the theme, the goal is the same. So she has the same goal. Basically, our kids are different, so we have different margins within those goals, but the goal <coughs> remains the same across the three schools. So in teaching and learning, her focus areas were continue to focus efforts on improvement of the high need subgroup, response to intervention practices, tiered and flexible grouping, Title I math instruction, co-teaching opportunities slash re realignment in her grade four, um, in, in self-contained as well, and redefine, revisit inclusion versus pull out services. Implement year one of the empowering writers and research and implement strategies to improve social emotional learning, uh, mindfulness, PBIS, and those kind of um, items. Peer observation scheduled monthly for faculty, <coughs> visit other classrooms, and increase win opportunities to three times per year. Under management and operations, school will be exploring social emotional learning, positive behavioral intervention and supports, as well as mindfulness. Faculty and staff continue to participate in pause to address social issues, provide choices and opportunities for students to express their creativity, ability to problem solve and work collaboratively, and continue with the top dog student recognition for good leadership, citizenship, etc. Um, she's also very excited to be dealing with a new gym floor. I, I think that's something and my guess is Mr. Connolly probably already has that project underway. Yes. Well, it's going to start July 6th. We, we have a date. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and I know she was very appreciative of that and very thankful to have that for her school. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Colleen. Uh, family and community engagement, very similar to the other schools. Her focus areas, still the parent involvement, involvement in committees and events at the school whether it be the PTO, school council, the WIN workshops, mystery reader, parents on parade, um, the continuous school council guest speaker series. She wants to encourage new Twitter followers for the Batch Bulldog and at EE Little School, and then participate in curriculum nights during the school year. Mr. Clean, do you want to move the mic just to, I, in case people are listening at home? Do you think you hear me? You don't think I'm loud enough? No, if it's, no, no, that's, the that's cable for NORCAM. won't pick you up oh, if you're not. That's for NORCAM. All right. The professional culture, I know at the little school they're spending a lot of time working on the professional culture with the leadership team to improve relationships, utilizing the results of the staff survey, using team building activities both in and outside of school, community service with staff and students, Friday Gene Day, collections to support specific organizations. Um, other community service events include North Burning Food Pantry, Coats for Kids, and the American Heart Association encourage peer observations and debriefing feedback and also the book studies are very popular with the teachers when you want them to get together and discuss some different areas teachers teaching teachers coaching and also some of the social emotional subjects like mindfulness and how to use yoga to address uh, movement breaks the new initiatives for that would be the PBIS work that she's doing with uh, Jolene Pepper the social emotional learning the implementation of empowering writers the increased choice opportunities uh, for win and makerspace, peer observation and feedback, and accountable talk, which stimulates higher order thinking, helping students to learn, reflect on their learning, and communicate their knowledge and understanding. Whoa, bachelor of school. Um, I would like to recognize Mr. Eric Evans is here. He's on my um, school council, and Miss Sarah, he's over to the left. Uh, Miss Har Harrington just left. Um, she was here for a second. I know that they were 
um, coming both to the school improvement plan presentation also to recognize um, Mrs. Romanowitz, um, her retirement uh, on behalf of the school council um, on that. This is probably the last time that I'll be making a school improvement plan presentation because Mrs. R is retiring at the end of July. Um, so I will be like drawing that in sand for you to come by and visit at the school. Um, it's, it's hard to believe that for 17 years um, she has been my partner in crime and has kept me happy, um, engaged in the work, um, and I couldn't ask for um, a better assistant in my time being. So um, I'm very anxious um, about the next chapter, but I'm very happy for her after her 30 years in North Reading to uh, congratulate her retirement. Uh, the school council is represented by Tina Boric, who also serves as the co-chair, Mr. Evans, Ms. Harrington, myself, Mary Ann Lape, uh, similar to Dr. McKay. Uh, she was a former teacher at the Bachelor School that retired. They're great community representatives to, to pull in when um, they have that educational background, a little institutional knowledge as well. And Sandra O'Connell uh, serves as a faculty rep as well. Uh, over the highlights for our, our year, we did a lot with the <coughs> standards and what they looked like and continued to launch the makerspace. I think Wendy Cleary really, for the district, um, I think the Hood School kind of pioneered that work, launched a little bit sooner than everybody, um, but that was great because we were able to learn from them. Um, and Mrs. Bork, um, for on our end, took that lead at the Bachelor School. Um, with Chris Lindsay um, and we've had some quite a bit of success not only similar to with the whole school challenges um, but just the use of that through digital learning time and then also making it available for classrooms and teachers to access that through their schedule of time permits this is the second year of our full implementation of Eureka math uh, we've done a lot of work through collaboration with our grade level teams to look at vertical alignment to document the expectations and address any scope and sequence concerns. This is kind of new data through the accountability, everything that's going on um, with the new math program. We're gonna have to pay attention to the results over the next few years, both from the state and any of the common assessments we use to kind of measure our success and where we wanna go. And that's that little bottom part for not only the one test, but what we're using inside to get a better handle on what our students' progress is and their growth. Data analysis is going to be a huge focus. Um, I, it was very challenging this year because a lot of the data, everything that was coming from the state, we didn't really know what they were going to do with it and how it was going to be presented. So just the release of what the accountability system was recently <coughs> has us working pretty hard to try to figure out um, how we're gonna respond to that. And that's why you see the teaching and learning goals as consistent as they are for the two years we're probably thinking before the state will kind of tell us where they want to go, similar to they have in the past. Um, we've been using a lot of our common assessment data, which is very consistent in all three schools, so it's great. We can have conversations at grade level, district-wide, and then come back together and look at some of our school-based best practices as well. Use that data to develop our student learning and possibly our professional practice goals as part of ed evaluation and then use professional time to revisit how we're going to progress model <coughs> and update goals and student learning targets as needed. School safety continues to be a huge priority in North Reading Public Schools. Uh, we want, you know, as part of that, we're teaching our students to be good citizens, what are our character traits that we think are important. We do that through our spotlight program, um, both at the classroom and school level. Uh, our community meetings give us opportunities to focus on these traits do some troubleshooting with teachers and students because not only do we our school-based meetings, but we have our grade level based meetings. So if they're dealing with teasing at a particular level, grade level, they're allowed to bring in an activity and bring that to all 80 kids at a grade level versus just 20 kids in little pockets, try to get that consistent message to our students. And then we're really starting to focus on how to carry that over through the parts where there are fewer adults. You know, really teaching children to make good choices, to be thinking about what would happen, you know, with consequential thinking, understanding how to be nice when the adults aren't as prevalent. You know, the harder times, the less structured times, lunch, recess, um, and the school bus. 
the teaching and learning is all the same. It, it's a little different at each school, but that number, it's, it's, it's not even the moving the kids from the um, almost meeting, partially meeting expectations. It's keeping all the other kids that are meeting expectations. You know, those cut lines are, um, a lot of students are very close to that line as well. Using the data to help us drive our student learning and professional practice goals, that's something we will do in September right away. We are expecting to get more preliminary data from the state a lot earlier, um, including some of it this month. The empowering writers is something that we're doing with our professional development for faculty, and we're hoping that that might help us vertically. Um, also consistently between the three schools to have a greater impact for those fifth graders entering the middle school as well. Um, and co-teaching is a, is a thriving practice in all three schools whenever we can go in to properly support students in their classrooms and then also be able to look at when we want to um, provide additional support for students who may not be identified um, through special education. Management and operations, it's that safe learning environment for all. Um, we continue to look at our survey data from students and families. Um, to make sure that they're prepared to take risks in the classroom, provide enrichment and educational opportunities to address documented areas of need, um, and social emotional learning is going to be a huge um, content area for the nor uh, elementary schools over the next few years. We're also working with the newly released emergency operations plan and our incident management teams to review best practices more frequently in response to different scenarios. Um, so using different professionals at different times to try to make sure that we're talking about how we possibly could respond to different situations. Uh, family community engagement, North Reading is, uh, is generous in, in so many ways. Um, financially, um, the support we get from our parent organizations, the BPO, the auction years. Um, but one thing we're really looking at is the investment of time and the value of that and looking at different ways that we can bring volunteers into the school um, to provide a little bit of support, whether it's to free up somebody else to be able to provide direct services to teachers or in some cases having parent volunteers work with students to um, you know, give a little enrichment assignment or extension of learning um, or a little remediation if needed. That was the first one and then also going on with trying to get our staff and administration to be more involved with the school council parent organization parent organization meetings and events they're so we get so much um, support from all of these and the investment is so great I want more people to be actively participating so it isn't always like Dr. McKay said um, something that I'm bringing forward be on behalf of the faculty I'd like them to be able to have the opportunity to work with some of these very talented individuals. Professional culture standard four um, is super important in what we're trying to do um, at the bachelor school. We have we've really been trying to mainstream the goal development for educator evaluation to um, focus on professional culture and teaching all students. We're really strong in standard one and we're developing in standard three. We're, we're having more conversations about how the work in standard four and two could impact student learning. And we're trying to use Edaval as part of that to get more opportunities to progress monitor and provide feedback. And then you see again the state performance data coming along and making sure we're aware of that. Um, as Dr. McKay opened with, I'm, I'm very proud of the work that we do together to talk of these things. You see so many of the initiatives are, are started somewhere and brought forward and we have such profound success that we try to duplicate um, in all of our schools to make sure our kids get a similar experience whenever possible, but at the same time, at the same time maintain our own school identity. Um, so thank you for the time to present the school improvement plans and Dr. McKay will take any questions. <laughs>
there any questions or <coughs> concerns or discussion that you want to ask Dr. McKay? Well, first can I say that now, so that's why I, I <coughs> made sure that I did my time sheet page correct this year. <laughs> I, I remember that. And how I did that is I just copied Mrs. Wallace. <laughs> <coughs> and Dr. McKay, your, your Twitter game, at least the Hood Schools Twitter game, is pretty good. I see a lot of uh, a hood game. tweets. A lot of hood tweets. In fact, I don't want, I think there may be more hood tweets than batch tweets, Mr. Clean. I definitely have had a tough uh, four to six weeks. I would say I've been off the Twitter wagon. Got to step that game up. Um, he, definitely, he definitely has a lot of plugs for his own number of followers. So, yes. You know, I'm, yes. I just think it's based on the ratios of students, right? Like, <laughs> on the smaller schools. Right, so exactly. Academy. Right. Um, I have a question. In regards to the SRR, yes. the Hood School, um, yours is like good citizenship or something? What's... Um, so we have our spotlight program. Spotlight program. Which kind of focuses on five character traits that we cycle back around um, two times each school year. So and now we're back in leadership. Okay. And uh, Miss Molly, she has something similar to yeah, that? I believe she calls it Top Dog. Top okay. Dog, yeah. So it, is it all kind of done the same way where I know the hood school is anonymous and then you kind of draw a name out but how does the little and the batch do it like the student recognition so our student recognition you're recognized by an adult in the school and they know who recognizes those on the certificate so they and we we do that through Um, how does that work for like the social emotional part like do they get really excited for it or <laughs> is it something that they just kind of well, just definitely brings a heightened awareness around like our like our values are safe responsible respectful um, that was defined by the teachers and the students like a long time ago we've, we've run with it um, do I think there's some opportunities to incorporate character traits and those kind of things, yes. So when we did our growth mindset book study, um, we talk a lot about perseverance at the Hood School. And like that's like my favorite yeah. word and that's what we talk about, especially like when there's challenges in front of the kids and, and those kind of things. So I think it comes out a little different at each at each school just because it's an organic development of yeah. that environment. Um, so I definitely think I could, the performance characteristics and those kind of things were things that we've talked about putting them in. still use open circle and a couple of, you know, in lower grade levels and those kind of things. Yeah. To, you, know, like you have that common language around like dangerous <coughs> and destructive behaviors and, and safety and all that stuff. So, I mean, there's different things going on in different places. I think it's an area where we, so the ultimate goal around that is everybody feels like they have a safe environment right. and it's just developed that way at each school. Um, and just one last question um, <coughs> from different schools. Do you do anything um, to prepare like the fifth graders of the Gary Middle School, you know, that they have to go into? I, do you have talks with them? Is it, you know, anything of that nature? Well, I mean, I can answer specifically for my school. Um, well, yes. We all, we all do the same thing. Yes, do we? Yeah, so I, I rotate across three classrooms. So we have a specialist, Mrs. Clary, who is the specialist for science. Mr. Quinn is the specialist for math, and Mrs. Happen and Mrs. Lorton are the specialist for ELA, and they rotate across the three. I, I love the idea of having a specialist because I feel like each time a teacher teaches a lesson, they can improve their practice all the way through it. But I also like the fact that the kiddos have to get their stuff, move all their stuff, and go from place to place within their physical environment, um, and maneuver it, and have all their belongings. I think that's a nice first step. So. We don't find the middle school to be very scary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the students have the opportunity, they come up here and take a tour of the school. Um, actually, all three come together, so they get On to the see their day. kids, do the same, same thing. And then they, uh, I think it's the eighth graders, not sixth graders, take them around and take a tour, and they have a chance to ask questions. And the parents have a 
information night that's already occurred. Um, and then on top of that, in August, they do the walkabouts. So the kids then come in and they're able to see their lockers. So the, the transition is actually probably more of excitement um, as they finish uh, elementary school and they get ready for middle school and our students, by the time after six years in elementary school, they're, they're about ready for that change. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, as far as I can recall, the, the mo only real scary thing for them through the whole process is the locker, or the lock, right? Like, that's what they, they usually get most, most worked up about, so. Okay. I'm going to ask a quick question. I know that Eureka Math has been rolled out at the batch. Has that also been rolled out at the other two? So everybody's using Eureka Math fully at this point? Yeah, so we're, we're blessed, too, because we have the, the leaders in that area. Yeah. And so there's a nice evenness across the schools with the implementation of it and assessment of it and just constant email communication across the buildings making sure that people are on the same pages around that and the delivery of that's the same um, so yeah we, we're pretty impressed with how that's rolled out I think that the teacher buy-in was huge mm -hmm. so that helps that evenness across the buildings I thought it, it seemed to be going well and it was really nice and I think it was just last month the district offered an elementary math curriculum night and it was hosted at the bachelor school but the nice thing was is they I want to say with pretty high confidence that 90% of the grade levels were represented by a teacher from each school. Yeah. So the parents from each community had access to teachers in their school, teachers in other schools. They were hearing different tricks from different special educators on how to help them with homework or other resources or materials. Um, and those are the types of things that kind of help us stay consistent and challenge ourselves to learn from one another the best to our students. I think that's huge for the parents too because one thing that you always hear listening to the parents is that they can't help their children in Eureka Math mm -hmm. as much as they could if they were doing math sort of the old-fashioned yeah. way if you will and so nights like that were huge because just the the parents kind of came out and said it helps me help my children uh, which I think goes a, a long way because it's it's new and novel for mm -hmm. parents to wrap their head around. Rob, do you have any comments? No. Okay. So I, I, I have a, a number of comments and questions. So I just want to, I mean, I want to start by just saying, like, I love how, I love the elementary schools in this town. And I think it's funny because before I was on this committee, I sort of thought that every school would really be the same, especially in the same town. And it's nice to see how different they are. And I just see how one school pushes the other one. Um, and, you know, one, one created makerspace and the other ones did this. And I, I I love that about this community. I think that, you know, each school has its own, you know, its own ethos almost. And, you know, and you see it in the community. You see people buy into that where, you know, people that want, I know a lot of people that want to move, but they won't move out of the little school district. <laughs> you know, they won't move out of the badge, out of the hood. And so I just think that's, it should be noted that, you know, I think the, the, it starts with the principals all the way through that, you know, everybody has their own identity, which I really think is great. Um, I little notes that I took down I mean the emergency operations plan I know a lot of work was has gone into that so I like to see that people are really working on that because I think school safety is a big issue still right now and so again even though it's we think more about, about the high school and the middle school I think I mean I think normally I would but it's good to see even at the elementary level that it's being addressed um, <clears throat> one of my one of my concerns I guess is well I guess I have a question first. Like things like the makerspace, is that how is that funded? Is that funded through the PTOs entirely, or is it funded through uh, other ways? So it's interesting. So that initial startup was from <coughs> our PTO, mm -hmm. Millard School. Um, we haven't really put a lot of money into it from the regular school budget, and a lot of the stuff. I mean, I have milk cartons and mm -hmm. egg cartons, and all. I have a collection bin out in front of the school. So it's more like those kind of things. It's it's not really a super huge expense when you go and collect the items that they need. It's almost like you can't go out and buy cartons of eggs, I mean, without the eggs. So to get those yeah. as the donations and have the kids work that kind of stuff it is, is huge. But like I added a 3D printer, and that was funded by the PA. So. And I think we both started that same low-tech way to <coughs> see, one, how it would fit, how much time people would use before you started looking at some of the larger um, ticket items. Um, and then that's usually where the organizations would go. 
Um, I probably did a, put a lot of money into it, um, but like I said, mostly low low tech, high quantity things for kids to be able to explore. And the three D printer, some of the technology, like an upgrade with where a PC school with some iPads and Chromebooks, but we had to get a new iMac to be able to do some of the work with some of the other things like that for digital uh, movies and different things like that. Yeah. I, just, I mean, I I guess, I mean, I, where I'm going with that, I think just. One of my concerns, I mean, I'm always concerned about our budget and whether or not we can support it. I hate if we push onto the PTO thing that should be, you know, the school budget should be funding. Um, and I also worry a little bit. I mean, I, I know a lot of the a lot of the people on the PTO at the batch at the little. I don't know as many on the hood. I think there's outstanding people there. But again, <laughs> different different schools. Sometimes there's an in, inequality sometimes in just the funding. And so I just want to make sure that if we're pushing in particular curriculum things because again every time we go to a school the makerspace is presented um, as kind of like one of the highlights and I just want to make sure that we're always funding um, what we need and that if like one you know one area of town is more affluent than another that you know if there is a funding difference or if it's ever impacting education that it's brought up so that we can address things um, and and the other thing the other way that came up was in the little, it was noted that the there was no funding for the prep classes for the um, MCAS preparation, <laughs> and that was a little concerning <laughs> to me. That I just, I just I, again, I understand that money only goes so far, but I hate to see in any presentation that something wasn't done because of a funding issue. And so, again, it's just a concern that I would watch going forward. That if there is something that's going to be cut because of funding, that you know, that I really hate to see anything cut because of that. Um, and the only other question I have, which it, unfortunately isn't for you two because Mrs. Molly's not here, but um, the other thing that was a little bit concerning that was that there's no community member on the little school PTO um, or on the uh, school council, because I do think it's important to have some community involvement. And so that would be the only thing that I would point out is that I think it'd be good to have a community member on all of the councils. I know, I know Mr. Colleen and I have both experienced Actually recruiting them because yep. I believe the criteria is a business person or there's some other language around it, but it has to be a person that the business or they do business or they're a community member from that physical district's place. So when you talk about the high school and the middle school, you got the whole you got the whole town. When you talk about one of us, we have to find somebody in our precinct, right? Yeah. So, so it's definitely a challenge. And I mean, I've been lucky in the sense that I had Starbucks and Stop and Shop because that happened to be in in, in my district. Mm -hmm. um, and now I have a real estate agent resides in my district so that that's my opportunity I, I know I've written letters in the transcripts, transcript mm -hmm. to letter to the editor and those mm -hmm. kind of things it's not a very easy task sometimes and sometimes mm -hmm. you might get two or three people but yeah no, I mean o overall I mean I think I, I love the elementary schools here I think that you know, I've met all I've met all of you guys I've been to you know different things at different schools and I just think everyone's doing a different but outstanding job overall. So thank you, thank you. Yeah. Oh, actually, one more question. I don't know if this is really for Mr. Mc Dr. McKay or not, but um, the one thing at the hood is there are so many different programs there. Like they were they were talking about the I know the Seam Collaborative hosts a, a program there, and there's the you know the, the program for students with alternative learning or dyslexia. And I guess my question is: Is there any opportunity for North Reading to take over any of these programs if we because I know last year we really pushed to get a chairperson at the elementary level yeah. to work specifically on special education. I don't know if there's an opportunity for North Reading to do that and get tuition students there. I mean, how are those programs going? I think that's a unique thing at the hood more than other schools. So a few things. So SEAMS is, is a rental. Correct. And it's for deaf and hard of hearing students. They rent three classrooms and a couple other space. Um, I don't think that we as a district would have any students that would meet the criteria of eligibility for that program. Um, we do own the RISE programs as well as the language-based programs. So for our students with pragmatic social skills or autism spectrum disorders that are in our reaching independence through structured education classrooms, the, the, that's all us. Like those are our staff, our teachers, our funding, and all that, as well as our language-based classroom. Um, that's one physical space. So, and this, you know. And there are programs in, at my school yeah. as okay. well that are district-based programs. That you're always looking at building, sustaining, and then possibly 
like you said, if yeah. you ever decide. I mean, I think that becomes the next policy part for probably for yeah. the school committee and looking at what tuition and that means and, and what that work is because I know we've done that in a while. And, and that's a historical thing for us because at the little school, she has three preschools. Right. Three. So it, everybody kind of had something at that yeah. point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to accept each of the school improvement plans of the elementary. So moved. Yeah. Second. Okay. I thought he did. <laughs> it's a, it's to accept the elementary school improvement plans. Yes. Three elementary. Yes. For the three the, elementary schools only. The E little, yes. the batch elder, and the hood. Yes. Yes. All right. Motion thank made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you for the binders. I don't have to say four, four to zero, one missing type thing, nothing okay. like that. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Diane, would you like to do the um, sure. policy? Yes. The brief is how it came to be. So Rich, myself, and Mr. Bernard all met to discuss the changes to this policy. So this is for residency. So when new folks come to town to confirm residency, um, there's not a lot of significant changes with the exception of really just doing, putting due diligence in place that mm -hmm. was not there. So the first page you'll only see the reviewed um, date at the bottom. It, on the second page under column A, and keep me honest here, Mr. Bernard, mm -hmm. but the landlord affidavit was something that we just did not have but has always been listed here. So that was a new ad that you will see. I just wanted to highlight that on the second page. Um, you can keep flipping through until you get to, the pages aren't numbered, so I apologize. Um, is really, so there's the reviewed comments at the bottom of the pages, but beyond that, you'll see one of the forms that has edits because it has a markup page. So if you keep flipping through, the responsible adult affidavit form has some edits. And it's really to, to add in um, for those children that might um, had shared living arrangements, really understanding um, the predominant living arrangement. So whether they're residing at what location four nights a week. Um, so it really gives more detail there where detail was not originally within this form. Um, you'll see some other edits within number seven and number nine, just really making the um, the statement's a little bit more robust. Can it, on, on number nine, is it supposed to be medical? No, there's a typo. That's, I was yes, just I did have that yeah, at the it bottom. It should be medical. Um, um, it should be um, at the very <coughs> bottom. It should be medical, medical and educational decisions for the child. And I, my only question on that one would be, all of these other things are just talking about residents, and then there's just one line in this affidavit about medical, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, I just... I just, my, I guess my question is, is this enough? Because I just worry that like, and again, I don't know much about divorce and I don't know if like one person would have physical custody for edu in the ability to make medical uh, educational decisions versus a different parent might have medical decisions. And if that's been thought about because it's just one line in there that says that you have to both be able to make medical and educational decisions. Mrs. Bowell, do you mind me just adding here? So the, 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 the edits here were all offered by the attorney. Mm -hmm. we, the, the, the committee, the sub policy subcommittee did, so I'm going to suggest that okay. Attorney McAvoy, you know. Okay. So he, he, he's made, reviewed it, it was his suggestion. He wrote to it. Do that. Okay. He, he made the edits to this and he also drafted the landlord Usually affidavit it's the form. the medical and educational <coughs> combined. Hand in so hand. it's either exactly. joint between both or resides with okay. one. So they kind of go hand in hand and that's probably what he was thinking. Okay. 
So that was the major changes was on this form. Um, and if you keep flipping, you'll see the this new form that Correct. bridges that gap. So this is when um, when they're unable to <coughs> show additional documentation, um, they can complete this form. And I believe it has to be signed by a notary, Correct. Um, which will really make it a robust documentation of the the residency for those situations in which this, this comes up. Okay. Good job. Thank you. And my only my only other question slash concern about this, and I don't think the I think the policy is great, and I don't know that we need to make any changes. But just if somebody ever puts down like the Polte home as which is going to be 55 plus community, which shouldn't have students there. And if ever anybody ever put that down as a residence, if there's anything we could do about it, um, they can they can have children you living there. Children. Oh, you can't have children there. Yeah, it just has to be one. Right, it's age restricted. One person has to be 55 or over that right. uh, lives in the unit. Yeah. Oh, because when I I asked a realtor about it, and they they had thought that you couldn't have children there. No, you absolutely can. Yeah, okay. I, I believe that's the case. okay. That's what I was wondering. All right, so and Madam Chairman, if you don't mind, just if I could interject. So I think what the policy subcommittee would like is a first reading on those two forms. The, or, the, the, the E refers to exhibit, so it's exhibit two. The edits to exhibit two, and, the, and then and a first reading on exhibit three. Correct. Thank you. So can I combine them, or do I need to do it, exhibit B and then exhibit? I think I would suggest doing separate separated. votes. Yeah. Okay. If you don't so mind. If I could have a motion to accept as first reading the North Reading Public Schools um, responsible adult affidavit. Mm -hmm. So I'm confused here. We didn't do anything on JBCA at all? Correct. Policy? Right. Or JBCAR. I just reviewed it. But I thought you just said you added landlord right. affidavit to. No, it was no. always there. We were adding the form. Okay, you're just adding the language was there. There was no okay. consistency yes. of no form. Okay, so the first two <coughs> and no changes or addition. Correct. So you're saying or the residency statement. JBCA E1 is what you're talking about. E2. E2. Right. Mm -hmm. First reading. For the first reading, yes. The responsible adult affidavit form. And I have a motion to accept at first reading for the JBCA E2. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. With, with the change, with the correction of medical. And I'll accept a motion to accept as first reading the North Reading Public Schools Landlord Shared Tenants Affidate, which is JBCA E3. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next is the proposed school committee meeting schedule for the 2018-2019 calendar year. Um, is there any dates that anyone needs to have changed, rearranged, moved? Um, I, mean, I have a question. I mean, October 9th is listed there? Yes. As a Tuesday, is there a meeting that day too? What is that? There, there is a meeting. It's just there, does, there was no particular call out for that meeting. Okay. That Monday is the Columbus Day holiday. Okay. So that's uh, that's just a meeting in the DLL. It's a regular meeting, okay. right? Okay. You you mean is there why is there nothing in the column? There was nothing. Right? Yeah, there was nothing. Just, there's I just no, didn't yeah, there's no particular nothing to do call out at this time. Okay. And then, I mean, I might. Yeah, I'm supposed to be come, returning from Vancouver and. September 10th, but I should be back for that. So I don't really know what next year's schedule too much, but I should be back. Mel, are you all set with the date? Yeah, it's good. That's good. All right. Um, no action needed, just the discussion. All right. Routine matters. We have um, some executive minutes and open session minutes to <coughs> approve. 
So if I could have a motion to accept the executive session of April 30th. Move to accept, uh, accept the executive session of April 30th, 2018 as written. Second. Any questions or discussion? All looks well. Actually, we can only have three votes on this, so. Yeah. Because Diana wasn't on the committee yet, so she has to abstain. But three is okay, as long as the three of us vote in favor. I didn't see anything wrong with it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Entertain a motion to accept the regular meeting of the school committee on um, April 30th. Move to accept the open meeting minutes for the regular meeting of the school committee April 30th, 2018 as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next, um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the executive session of May 7th. Move to accept May 7th executive session mm -hmm. minutes okay. as written. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And lastly, the open session of the regular school committee meeting on May 7th. Move to accept May 7th, 2018, open session minutes as written. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, we don't have a budget update at this time. That's correct. So we're good. And do we have any staffing? Madam Chairman, we do. Um, we've been we've been um, doing some hiring um, across the district. Excuse me. There we go. Um, for the next uh, school year for 2018-19. So I thought I would update you tonight on on a number of uh, new staff that have been hired uh, to date. I, I anticipate I'll be doing this, um, if not at the June 25th meeting, certainly uh, in the summer meetings. Um, so I am pleased to inform you and the community that we have hired Stephanie Croston to replace Sandy Romanowitz as the secretary at the Batchelder School. At the middle school, we have hired Heather Maiola, who has been a long time Title I tutor in the district. Um, she will be a permanent math teacher. And we've also hired, um, we had a fortunate situation this year with two um, long-term substitute uh, teachers that were in for the full year, and we have um, offered them uh, a permanent position, Jessica Murdoch and Catherine Gray, both uh, English language arts. Um, at the high school, we have hired a Miss Camille Curtis as a special education teacher. Um, ben Owens will serve as a, a shared teacher at the middle high school. He's going to teach um, music at the middle school, and he will be the new band director, replacing Eric Foreman. Ben Owens is his name. We've hired uh, Caitlin O'Donnell as a school psychologist, the new position that was funded in the fiscal year 19 uh, budget. A digital learning specialist in, uh, for the district, replacing uh, Joanne Coughlin, who's retired, is um, James Segroy. And um, the el new elementary team chairperson for special education, a new position in this year's budget, um, has gone to an inside candidate, a teacher, a special education teacher at the Batchelder School, Rachel Anastasia. So that will be a kind of a trickle down opening um, at the Batchelder School that we will be looking to fill. So, so that's uh, one, four, seven, nine, nine positions uh, filled to date. We still have a number to go. Um, some, you know, some retirements to be filled. Um, we've had a number of resignations in the paraprofessional world, um, people moving on, which is not unusual. I don't think it's anything that I, is untypical from what I've experienced so far, but it's, you know, it's going to look like a longer list of people, I think, as the summer unfolds, but it's really, it's not additional positions beyond what you, you folks already know as um, having been funded in the budget. So welcome to those, to those folks. Thank you. On to bids and donations. Are you going to be the next <coughs> I guess I'll do it tonight. <laughs> you don't have to. I'll do it. Okay. But we'll have to, we have to groom somebody else. Um, I move to accept with gratitude a donation of $50 from Kathleen Apigian. Uh, it's a scholarship donation for a class of 2018 graduating senior. Second. 
asked a second now. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Cindy prefers when we all I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. <laughs> um, I move to accept a donation of $127 from Mary and Richard Lazen, except with gratitude, that is. And this is a donation for the North Reading High School track team. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to accept $491.39 from donorschoose.org, and this is for smart technology speakers for Jana Camo's music class at the Hood Elementary School. And I believe donorschoose.org is a site where teachers and others can put up their requests and they get funded. It's almost kind of like a GoFundMe for education, correct? Yeah, yeah. it is one of the sites we, we, we have authorized right. at, once the principal has approved the project. That's what, so principals have to approve all projects before yeah. they, okay. Before it gets posted. So I move to accept that donation. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, there's no subcommittee updates at this time. Uh, however, then the schedule would be for the athletic subcommittee tomorrow, June 12th at 1230 p.m. at the superintendent's um, conference room. The NORCAM Board of Directors on June 28th at no. 6 p.m. That's actually been moved to June 21st. Thank you for the that. correction. Okay. Um, June 21st at 6 p.m. in the NORCAM office. Everybody has. John, do you have an administrative report for us? Madam Chairman, I do not. Do I do not. not have an administrative report this evening. All right. Um, in correspondence, there is a letter from Danielle uh, Masterson, the head of the youth services at the Flint Memorial Library. Do, do Could you want to speak to that? So, yeah, it, it, you know, Danielle Masterson is, uh, if, if you don't know her, is a very, very nice person. Um, has really done a lot in um, integrating her work at the public library with um, our students of the district and teachers. She participated in Parent University with um, our middle high school library, excuse me, our high school library media specialist and also a um, library media paraprofessional, Diane McGuire from the Hood School, excuse me, from the Little School. Um, just has really, I think, you know, done a nice job of, of trying to, to tie the two organizations together, the, the public library and the um, school's library services for students. And so one of our um, special education programs at Transition Academy that um, is housed here at the high school um, has as part of its program um, a, an externship program for the students and so the students are um, integrating out into the community in various um, various ways they do some um, some work at the Marshalls located out on uh, Route 28 um, they also do work at the food pantry and they've been doing some work as Danielle outlines um, at the public library and it's been a very they've all been very very nice uh, partnerships I think very beneficial to the to the students, but quite honestly, I think the people that host them end up in the end finding out that they get more out of the, the experience, I think, than they anticipated. Um, the adults working with them, it's a really, it's, it's a very special thing to see. And so I thought it was nice that Danielle um, took the time um, to send all of you a letter just acknowledging um, the students and the teachers. And um, Gail Tallis and, and Kim Spina are two paraprofessionals. Um, in the, um, in the Transition Academy program, but then their teachers, Judy Carter, Mark Wadley, um, and Jonathan Hudson, um, have really done an exceptional job, I think, with this program and, and, and teaching the students some very valuable life skills as part of their, as part of their externship at the, um, at the Flint Memorial Library. So I thought, I thought um, the letter would be something that you, know, you, would, wanna, you, would, you would want to see, so. All right, yeah, great. I didn't realize they did that. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been pretty spa it's it's a pretty neat thing they do. Quite honestly, you know, we've had we've had students there were students participated in graduation on Friday, which was you know that, that have, have have moved through the the transition academy program now. It's it's very nice to see, and you know, again, as we talk many times, and usually in our budget deliberations, your budget deliberations, we talk about the value of students being educated in their home schools, and I think this program particularly is an example where I think the benefits of us being able to offer a quality program to, to students with special needs in district in our in our schools is um, is 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 a is a good example of, of, of the work that's getting that's going on and getting done. So, 
So it was informational purposes. Thank you. All right, for future business, <coughs> our next meeting is June 25th at 6.30 p.m. here at the Digital Learning Lab. Then July 19th, which is a Thursday, we have a goal setting workshop at 4.30 p.m. in the superintendent's conference room, and then a, a regular meeting here at 6.30 at the, um, here at the Distance Learning Lab. And then the next one um, is August 27th. Uh, again, we have a 4.30 for the <coughs> goals budget workshop if needed. And then at 6.30, the regular meeting here at the Distance Learning Lab. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.